Guten Tag, in this video I'll be showing you four sourdough mistakes that beginners and pros make. So say no more to flat sourdough bread after watching this video, you'll be making much better bread at home. The four mistakes we'll be having a look at in this video is under fermented, lack of dough strength, under baked and severely over fermented. This graphic is coming from my previous video debugging your crumb structure where I show you seven mistakes you can spot by reading your dose crumb. And to make that video I asked all of you to send me some of the pictures and one option you could choose when trying to detect what is wrong with your bread was half me please. So these are the breads that I'll be looking at in this video. The first submission is from Stephanie so let's check this out. On the right hand picture you can see that there are several pockets of air, relatively small and the dough is overall very flat. This to me is a sign of over fermentation. This means that your sourdough dough has been sitting there for too long. Or it could also be that your sourdough starter is not active enough. Try to reduce the fermentation time or try to apply a couple of more feedings to your sourdough starter. With each subsequent feeding, your sourdough stutter is going to become better at fermenting your dough. One feeding per day is going to help to give you a better yeast to bacteria balance. Another great trick that I've been suggesting to many bakers is to use a stiff sourdough stutter. A stiff sourdough stutter is around 100 grams of flour and then 50 to 60 grams of water. So it's a very very stiff stutter but this boosts the yeast activity a lot. Picture on the left from Stephanie, if I look at this now, it looks like it has not been fermented for enough. So two extremes here in two of the pictures. I'm saying this because I see several very large pockets of air here. This is typically a sign that the fermentation didn't have enough time. During baking the dough is going to inflate like a non-leavened pita bread and that creates you those super craters. Next submission was from Josh. Same as Stephanie here I would say on the left picture here you can see the large pockets of air sign that the bread has not fermented for long enough. This is also sometimes known as fool's crumb. You think oh wow there are some pockets of air but actually it's a sign you didn't push the fermentation long enough. And of course here are some pictures of me of how I started to bake my own bread. Me sitting in front of the oven and look at my failure on the right hand side. But I'm showing you this because every homemade bread is a win. So even if it doesn't look perfect, even if it doesn't taste perfect, it's much better than all the store bought bread. So no matter what, don't give up. Keep practicing and I hope this video is helpful. Next picture from Amo Rosa. And it seems we are in the under fermentation train today. So the same I would say interesting color, but yeah, large pockets of air here again. Like a pita bread that's not leavened, it's going to pop in the oven and create you super pockets. Gerardo Sandoval. And this to me is actually two mistakes I would say. First of all again, definitely under fermented. And then I think this is also a lack of dough strength. The dough hasn't been kneaded long enough. It's very important to develop your gluten network when you're baking wheat. And you do this by kneading for a longer period of time. You can also be reducing the amount of water that you're using for your flour. This has been a big mistake I did at the start. I would always follow water suggestions from the internet. I would try to follow that and then my dough simply didn't work. The amount of water you have to use depends on your flour. So the best thing you can do is start low with the water and then slowly add a little bit more water. When kneading, I recommend you knead five minutes take a five minute break, knead again five minutes, take another five minute break. This really allows your flour to soak up all that water. It's much better than kneading for 15 minutes straight. You'll save so much time and your dough is going to be better. Everything I'm talking about I've also been writing down in a book. The book is completely free. You can get it at the bread code slash book. I'll also be linking it in the description of course. I believe this information is essential and that's why I'm making this book completely free and open source. Julia Nicholson. I think here this bread again we are on the under fermented train. This looks under fermented and also I think a little bit under baked. When you bake your bread for too short then your dough is not able to evaporate all the water. Some water is going to stay inside and the dough feels very 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 sticky. And this is exactly what this dough looks like. Sometimes you just have one part near the bottom of your dough where you see this stickiness. But here I would say yeah you can see that in several places. A really really good trick 
is to use a thermometer and measure the core temperature of your dough. The moment you are above 92 degrees Celsius, putting the Fahrenheit value here, you know the dough is ready. Afterwards, you can remove your source of steam, whatever you have, and you can just finish building the crust. Once it's 92 degrees, you can bake for as long as you like afterwards. The color of the crust depends on what you personally like. Some people prefer it a little bit more light, other like a nice dark crust. A thermometer is a really, really good way to nail the baking time every time. Next submission from Kalle. Nice, beautiful breads here, Kalle. You even have a little bit of an ear here. That's great. But still, I would say both of the breads have not fermented long enough, under fermented as shown by the large pockets of air. Bonus points here for adding lots and lots of butter. This is exactly what I'm doing. And yeah, here, based on the crumb, you can see it's a little bit crumbly. So I guess you took a slice while it was still a little bit too hot and then this happens. But I'm not gonna blame you because this is what I like to do myself. Take a slice while it's still hot, put a lot of butter on it, some salt. So, 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 so good. Both breads here go into the same category, under fermented. So push that fermentation a little bit longer, try to make your sourdough starter a little bit more active or consider going the stiff sourdough starter route. Next picture by George and this is the first bread George has ever made. So first of all, congratulations. My bread didn't look at all like this. I think the issue here is again, under fermented but also here this is interesting check this out you can see several large pockets towards the top part of the crust this is a sign that there has not been enough steam in the oven or that you baked at a too hot temperature what happens is the crust seals and then the pockets of air try to move upwards and then they converge into super pockets. Try to lower the temperature during your bake. To me, the ideal temperature has always been around 230 degrees Celsius. And for the first stage of the bake, use as much steam as possible. You could also be using a Dutch oven in case you have that. If you don't have a Dutch oven, no worries. I always bake with an inverted tray on top and then all with lots and lots of boiling water below. This really does wonders. Calito Moreira, I think this is a great looking bread. Based on the crust, I would say maybe this has also been baked a little bit too hot or maybe with a little bit too little steam. Also revealed by the pockets here towards the top part of the crust. Furthermore, here are some larger pockets in the center. Mm, this could be maybe a shaping issue as well. So when you're shaping the dough, try to pop some of the super large pockets because else this is what could happen. The crumb is not so open, but that might also just be the fact that a little bit more whole wheat flour has been used. So I think this is a really, really good looking bread actually. Markus here, next submission, some Brötchen. Try to pronounce Brötchen. It's a very uh, hard to pronounce German word and it's actually a different word depending on each region. Beautiful bread rolls here and the crumb shows not fermented long enough, two large pockets. So full scrum again, push the fermentation. Like I mentioned before, that's gonna help. Yuho! This is a great submission, I think, because the left-hand bread looks quite decent. Good job here. And the right-hand side is a complete frisbee. It still probably tastes delicious. But when you have a frisbee like that, it's a sign that you've severely over-fermented your dough. So you have been fermenting for way too long. What happens is the bacteria, this is actually amazing, the bacteria starts to eat your gluten. So you have less and less gluten the longer you push the fermentation. And at some point, all the gluten is gone almost and then your dough just collapses. It can't hold the structure anymore. You'll have a nice, nice sour tang in the bread. I love this kind of bread, but still it won't have that structure anymore and it will miss a little bit of that amazing texture. Thank you so much for all of the amazing submissions and we have three winners. Josh Tams Marcus, please send me a message. You won my sourdough starter bread pit. You can purchase a little bit of my starter using the link, the bread code, slash starter and you can use the coupon code HALF if you like for 50% off. If you're having a little bit of issues with your fermentation it might be a good idea to buy a more stable sourdough starter. You can also mix my starter with your starter and create a sourdough starter baby if you like. That's it. I hope you learned something new. I hope you had fun and as always may the gluten be with you. Mm -hmm.